from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible to, thanks to the kindness of the late Thomas Constantine Zoma, who remembered the daily televised Mass community in his estate. This Mass is being offered in memory of Thomas and for his living and deceased family and friends. Mr. Zoma was a person concerned about the sufferings of Christians in his homeland of Iraq and neighboring countries. Today we offer our prayers for all the Christians in Iraq and in the Middle East, recalling the encouraging, uh, encouragement of Pope Francis who prayed in these words. May the Lord sustain the, the efforts of those who work for dialogue and coexistence in the Middle East where Christian faith was born and is alive despite the sufferings. To the dear people of Iraq and its neighbors, may God always grant strength, perseverance, and courage. We thank the family of the late Constantine, Thomas Constantine Doma for the gift of this Mass. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we ask God to forgive us our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Cast your kindly light upon your faithful people, and with the splendor of your glory, set our hearts ever aflame, so that they may never cease to acknowledge their Savior, and may truly hold fast to him through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. My little children, this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another. We must, not like, we must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who, hate a, all who hate a brother or sisters are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses to help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. The word of the Lord. people 
with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let all The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. After choosing Andrew and Peter to be his first disciple, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this, than these. And Jesus said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending above the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. A month ago today, one of our Jesuits died. His name was Father Blaise Jasko. He was 102 years old a man who was mentally alert right until the end. But he was also a man who was very silent, a man of very few words, and I really admired him. And on the other hand, there was a younger Jesuit, there is a younger Jesuit in our community who just cannot stop talking. He talks and talks and talks until somebody described him as a stream of consciousness often and continually put into words. Now, don't get me wrong, he is very intelligent. What he says is very intelligent, but totally unconnected and not related to the subject that we are talking about. I couldn't help thinking about him when I heard that first reading from John today. John speaks about love, and then he throws out a whole lot of ideas which are not connected. They are beautiful ideas, but worthy of prayer, of meditation and explanation on their own. We must love. And then he throws out the idea, but Cain killed his brother out of hatred. If we love, we do not abide in death. If we hate, we are murderers. If we truly love and are righteous, we will be persecuted. 
If we love, then we have to sacrifice everything, even, even including our lives. All beautiful ideas, but how are they connected? And furthermore, as we enter in 2024, how do they connect with the reality today? Jesus Christ said, peace to people of all goodwill. That was the message that was given. The reality today is that we are in the middle of wars all over the place. In our own private lives, the Christmas tree has been brought down. The fairy lights that are around the Christmas tree have been neatly wrapped and put away. The bills are there on our table. And as we go to pay the bills, our mind goes back to the presents that we have brought. There are certain presents that have to be brought because of, uh, of protocol. A parish priest will buy presents for his secretary, the sacristan, uh, the cook, the person who takes care of the choir, all these things. And they, in turn, will buy a present for the parish priest. A boss will buy presents for his employees. All right, uh, the people who help him around, the people who warn him, the people who get things ready. And then we stop and we find there are presents and it brings a smile on our face. We have bought presents for those we care for. We bought presents for those that we love. These are the people who stand around us and support us. They give us advice in the times when we need advice. They are there for a shoulder that we can cry upon. They support us, and we know that we can share with them, and it will not be tomorrow in the Toronto Star on the front page. They will also give us warnings about things that, are, that we should do. I remember when I first came over here, I was going to a wake. I put on my clerical collar and I was going, but I was wearing jeans, and one of the ladies in the said, Father, change those jeans. Put on a pair of slack. I said, I've got my clerics on, what does it matter? Nobody's going to, annoy, to notice. And she says, you know what? We women will notice that you're wearing jeans and you should wear something decent over here. And that is so true. And so we find that if we are living righteous lives, we are going to be persecuted. And we have a beautiful example of what righteous life is in Nathaniel in our gospel today. A righteous person is not a person who is arrogant, is not a person who says, well, I'm going to live this life and point out the faults of others. No, a righteous person is a person who lives because he or she knows this is the right thing to do. Regardless of what people think about them, regardless about what people will say about them, they will do the correct things, not to criticize others. But as John tells us in the first reading, you live a righteous life, and by your very way of living your righteous life, you, pour, you put a light on the things that are wrong around you. Nathaniel was a man just like this. He was a man who lived a righteous life. He was not taken in by falsehoods. He was not taken in by bribes. He wouldn't be taken in by things that are like placebos just to make him feel good. Here he was, a true Israelite, as Jesus would call him, without guile. He had been waiting for the Messiah. He had heard that it was within 70 weeks, according to the prophet Daniel. And that was the time now. And here Philip comes to him and he says, we have found the Messiah. And you can imagine a movie script going on. Nathaniel saying to him, really, you found the Messiah? I have been waiting for him. So how do you know it's the Messiah? And Philip says, well, he is doing all the things that Isaiah says. He is curing the blind, the deaf, the dumb, and he's preaching the good news. Yes, that says Nathaniel, and where is he? Oh, he is Jesus of Nazareth. And you can see Nathaniel laughing. You must, you must be kidding me. Nothing good comes out of, out of Nazareth. But then Nathaniel is truly seeking for the Messiah, and he is willing to go anywhere for the sake of this Messiah. He's willing to even try what Philip tells him. If you and I truly want to encounter God, are we willing to meet God wherever God appears? 
Or am I like Nathaniel before he met Jesus? I want to meet dear God on a Sunday at mass at the 10 o'clock. Sometimes God of surprises may actually encounter us, but like Jesus, God is to be found anywhere with the tax collectors, with the publicans, and with the prostitutes. And if we really truly want to encounter God, then we must be ready to meet God wherever God chooses. And we need not say, what good can come out of Nazareth? Because a lot of good does come out of it. God bless you all. Will you join me now as we pray together? For all those in our daily televised prayer intention book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this holy season of Christmas, we ask you, gracious God, to hear our community Christmas prayer that for those experiencing loneliness and abandonment, that they may find peace and hope of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Thomas Constantine Zoma and for the people of Iraq, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to you, to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awful mystery, through, though invisible in his own, divine nature, his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before our ages. He has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with the angels, we praise you, and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. in 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Thomas Constantine Zoma and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, be, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may fit, be fit to receive your gift through the very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.